The Go-Giver, a little story about a powerful business idea by Bob Berg and John David Mann. The Law of Authenticity. What was it like? They were the first words either had spoken the whole 15 minutes they'd been on the road into town. Much like yesterday, we've been unable to stop thinking about the office. Joe was now having a hard time tearing his mind away from Susan's note in her tearful array of woes the night before. Pender's quarry caught him off guard. Sir? Joe didn't think he called Pender sir since their first meeting. Applying the third law, said Pender. What was it like for you? It occurred to Joe that up to this point, Pender had never once asked him about anything regarding his homework or checked to make sure that he was fulfilling the condition. So why was he asking now? A glance at Pender told him the man wasn't checking up on him. He was asking because he genuinely wanted to know. It's because he knows something happened, he thought. Something important. It was... It went okay. I mean, I think it did. Honestly, I'm not sure. Pender nodded as if Joe's response made complete sense. These lessons don't apply only to business, Joe. A genuinely sound business principle will apply anywhere in life. In your friendships, in your marriage, anywhere. That's the true bottom line. Not whether it simply improves your financial balance sheet, but whether it improves your life's balance sheet. I guess I never thought about that before. I highly recommend it, he glanced sideways at Joe. My wife and I, remember, have been married for nearly 50 years. 50 years, Joe Deco? 50 years. The man's marriage had lasted nearly twice Joe's current lifespan. Now, this is going to sound very old-fashioned. Pender glanced at Joe again, as if looking for confirmation that Joe understood this. Okay, Joe said, nodding. I believe there is one reason, and only one reason, that we have stayed together so long and are as happy together today as we were 48 years ago. More so, in fact. The reason is this. I care more about my wife's happiness than I do about my own. All I ever wanted to do since the day I met her is make her happy. And here's the truly remarkable thing. She seems to want the same for me. Wouldn't some people call that codependent? Ventured Joe. Yes, some probably would. Know what I call it? Happy. Pender laughed. Yes, certainly that. I was going to say I'd call that success. Success? Joe thought about his life with Susan and how it had begun to feel like a constant drama of battle and compromise. 50-50s a losing proposition. Like what Sam says about networking, he commented. Exactly, Pender pointed out the windshield. And here we are. Joe saw the huge auditorium looming ahead and turned into the underground parking lot. They were going to hear the keynote speaker at an annual sales synopsis. It was one of the city's largest events, and it attracted participants from all over the country. Today's speaker, though, was a local resident. Her name was Deborah Davenport. The place was packed but Pender had reserved two seats for them at the back of the large hall. Joe was impressed by the size of the crowd. He guessed there were a good 3,000 people waiting to hear the speaker. And she did not disappoint. After the synopsis master of ceremonies gave a brief, glowing introduction, the speaker stepped center stage, standing to a standing ovation from the crowd. She waited gracefully until they had finished their applause and seated themselves. Twelve years ago, I turned 42, she began. I got three presents for my birthday. One, my best friend gave me a $100 gift certificate to JCPenney, which in those days was the high water of mark of my fashion existence. She paused, looked to the right and to the left, then leaned forward to the audience and struck a confidential just between you and me pose. And by the way, she added, JCPenney is still my number one fashion experience. This was greeted by a round of laughter and applause. She grinned and waved everyone quiet. I mean, why throw your money away on overpriced fashion that'll just be obsolete next year? Am I right? Besides, ladies, she tapped her index finger a few times to her temple. It's what's inside that makes you beautiful, not the wrapping. Another wave of laughter and applause rushed through the place. We're 60 seconds in and she owns the room. Joe marveled to himself. Deborah Davenport continued. Two, my three kids pulled their money together and got mom an all-day, all-expense-paid retreat at a spa downtown. I mean, the expensive kind. All day. And they planned it so they had enough left over to pay the babysitter. In fact, for just a breath, she wavered and seemed about to cry. In fact, they had called her up 
and set it up so that she be there all day without my finding out ahead of time, which knowing how nosy their mom can be was a miracle of administrative genius and first-rate sneakiness. The crowd laughed a warm rustle of appreciation. Three, my husband gave me the most surprising gift of all. He gave me the wake-up call of a lifetime when he walked out the door and never came back. Joe felt the room take a breath and hold it. It took me one full year to unwrap it, open, and understand and use that gift. She looked around, and Joe saw that she was meeting the eyes of individual after individual, not only in the first few rows, but throughout the crowded auditorium. Today, I want to share that gift with every one of you. For the next 15 minutes, the speaker took through her story. At 42, suddenly single, with three kids to feed, Deborah had never spent a day in the mainstream workplace. As a full-time mother, wife, and manager of a busy household, she had juggled dozens of skills and worked grueling hours. But as she quickly learned, none of them, which she had spent the last 20-odd years doing, was considered marketable. Everywhere I applied, she told the audience, I was overage and underqualified. After her husband left town, she spent the next few months pursuing a real estate license. Deborah was a quick study and passed the exam on her first try. The following eight or nine months were busy with learning and trying to follow all the advice and teaching of those in her firm. They taught me every kind of sales mythology and closing technique ever invented. I learned the direct close, the deal concession close, the time-driven close, and the trial offer close. They taught me the compliment clothes and the embarrassment clothes, the best time to buy clothes, and the never the best time to buy clothes, the courtship clothes, and the shame clothes. I learned every clothes from A to Z. She paused, looked around, then deadpan. Oh, you don't believe me? A ripple of laughter went through the first few rows. Joe guessed there were some Deborah Davenport fans who already knew whatever riff might be coming next. Well, Let's see. She began, then started counting them on her fingers. There was the assumptive clothes, the bonus clothes, the concession clothes, the distraction clothes, the emotion clothes, the future clothes. The people in the first row began to clap in rhythm, one clap to each new letter of the alphabet. The Golden Gate Bridge clothes, the humor clothes, the IQ clothes, the Jersey City clothes. And now the whole audience joined in marking each beat with a loud clap. The kill clause close, the leverage asset close, the money's not everything close, the now or never close, the ownership close, the puppy dog close, the quality close, the reversal close, the standing room only close, the takeaway close, the underpriced value close, the vanity close, the window of opportunity close, and she took a big breath, the Xavier Hollander clothes, the Yaya Sisterhood clothes, and the Zaza Gabor clothes. Honey, I learned how to close. The rhythmic clapping dissolved into a huge round of applause as everyone laughed and cheered her bravara performance. She had held her hands up, eyes twinkling, until the laughter and clapping died down. And let me tell you what happened. At the end of a year, I had not sold one single solitary property, and I hated it. Every single desperate, failing minute of it. The hall was silent. That Thursday, I turned 43. For this birthday, my best friend bought me a ticket to a sales synopsis. Tell you the truth, I didn't want to go. But she was my best friend, she smiled. Still is, by the way, and she beamed down at the front row, where Joe guessed the woman in question was seated. So what could I do? She's awfully persuasive. Laughter from a cluster of women in front confirmed Joe's guess. I went to the synopsis. She looked around as if suddenly recognizing where she was for the first time. Actually, it was this synopsis. Matter of fact, I sat right where you all are sitting right now on a Thursday afternoon in September, just like this one. That year, the keynote speaker was a man i would never heard of before. He talked about the importance of adding value to what you sell. Whatever it is you sell, he told us, even if it's a mundane commodity that everyone is selling too. Whether it's real estate, insurance, or hot dogs. And with a chill, Joe realized that Mrs. Davenport was talking about the man sitting next to him. Whatever it is, he said, you can excel by adding value. If you need money, he said, add value. And if you need a lot of money, add a lot of value. People in the audience laughed when he said that. 
but I didn't see anything funny. I was sitting way in the back feeling just awful about my life. Somehow, I got up the courage to raise my hand. His eyes lit right on me, and he said, yes, the woman in the back. And as I stood up and said, what if you need a lot of money fast? He nodded and smiled and said, then find a way to add a lot of value fast. The audience responded with a quiet ripple of laughter. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, I thought about what he said all that weekend. I thought about it hard. What value could I possibly add to sell a real estate listing by a failed broker in a buyer's market? Sunday evening, it came to me. What could I possibly add? Nothing. There was not one single solitary shred of ounce of value I could think of at that insignificant little Deborah Davenport could add. After a year of trying, I had proven I had no professional value whatsoever. What I had to offer these clients was nothing. That Sunday evening, I made up my mind it was time to quit. She paused. I just, she paused again, took a breath to steady her emotion. She tapped her finger on her temple again and looked out at the group. You understand what was going on in here? When my husband walked out that door, my self-esteem got up and walked out with him. Joe noticed hundreds of heads nodding. She was touching a powerful cord. My husband had seen me more as a liability than as an asset. The job market had agreed with him, and obviously so did the world of real estate. Who was I to argue that point? Joe glanced around and noticed quite a few damp pairs of eyes. What mysterious power did this woman hold over them? Deborah Davenport gave a slow, sad shake of her head. A year later, and I still hadn't unwrapped my birthday gift. She took a sharp breath and let it out again as if to shake off her mood. So I went in the next morning ready to clean out my desk. I had one last appointment that I couldn't weasel out of. So purely out of obligation, I met the prospect and drove her to see the house. It's already over, I told myself. So what the heck? I just let myself have a good time with her. I let go of all the techniques. I didn't even bring spec sheets on the house. She chuckled disapprovingly. On the way over, we just chattered, talked about everything and anything, silly stuff. I couldn't tell you for sure whether I even told her the asking price. It was the most unprofessional, sloppy, irresponsible, disgraceful sales presentation in the history of real estate. She held up both hands in attitude of aspiration as if to say, what a ditz, huh? And of course, she brought the house. It took a full minute for the applause to die down enough for her to go on with her story. I learned something that day. When I said that my life as a mom, wife, and household manager left with me, nothing the marketplace wanted, I was wrong. There was something else I learned over the years, and that was how to be a friend, how to care, how to make people feel good about themselves. And that, my friends, is something the marketplace wants very much, always has, always will. The speaker at that synopsis had said, add value. I had nothing to add but myself. And apparently, that was exactly what's been missing. She paused and took a deep breath, giving her feelings a moment to settle. I sold a few more homes since then, she began, and an appreciative wave of laughter went through the audience. Everyone present knew Deborah Davenport's sales record. A few more homes was probably the understatement of the decade. Later, I met the husband of the woman I sold that first house to, and he connected me to some friends who were getting involved in commercial real estate. I said I would never do that. Wrong again. Deborah Davenport's comment, and he connected me to some friends, touched a loose thread in Joe's mind, something he meant to ask a few days earlier but had forgotten about until now. He leaned over to Pender and whispered, the connector. Pender smiled and nodded. Aha, thought Joe. So it was Deborah Davenport who sold Ernesto, the enterprising cafe owner of his multi-million dollar commercial properties. When would he get to meet this connector character? And I've had the honor of being named the city's top realtor in both residential and commercial markets. Joe's mind was still buzzing. If it was if there was this connector who had linked up Ernesto Lafrette and Deborah Davenport and had helped arrange the financing for Nicole Martin's fledging software business, he leaned over again and whispered, Who are we going to meet tomorrow? Pender whispered, Ah, the Friday guest. 
He nodded to himself. The Friday guest is a surprise. It's the connector, isn't it? Joe asked. I'm finally going to meet the connector. Pender just smiled and wouldn't say another word. And in the past few years, Deborah Davenport was saying, I've crisscrossed the country speaking to groups just like this group today, and I tell every one of them the same thing. I'm here because I have the awesome responsibility and honor of selling you something far more valuable than a house. What I'm here to sell you on is you. People remember this. No matter what your training, no matter what your skills, no matter what area you're in, you are the most important commodity. The most valuable gift you have to offer is you. Reaching any goal you set takes 10% specific knowledge or technical skills. 10% max. The other 90 plus percent is people skills. And what's the foundation of all people skills? Liking people, caring about people, being a good listener, Those are all helpful, but they're not the core of it. The core of it is who you are. It starts with you. As long as you're trying to become someone else or putting on some act or behavior someone else taught you, you have no possibility of truly reaching people through the most valuable thing. You have to give people is yourself. No matter what you think you're selling, what you're really offering is you. She glanced toward the back of the hall and Joe was startled to realize she was looking directly at him, or at least it certainly seemed like it to Joe. You want great people skills? She leaned in toward the audience as if confiding something to her best friend. You want people skills? She repeated. Then be a person. She looked around from face to face. Can you do that? Will you do that? She looked to the left and to the right, again meeting the gaze of dozens of individuals. It's worth 10,000 times more than all the closing techniques that ever have been or ever will be invented. It's called authenticity. Joe remembered wondering what mysterious power this woman held over them, and he knew he had just heard the answer. They pulled out of the parking garage in silence and threaded their way throughout the downtown maze. Joe had thought about many things in the last few days, and he had reevaluated much about the way he did business. But he did not he had not been prepared for the impact that Deborah Davenport had on him with that single word, authenticity. He glanced over at Pender's impassive expression, unreadable as the Sphinx, then back at the road. You know why I came to see you Saturday? Pender nodded. You were hungry to learn about success, genuine success? Joe paused, then said, Actually, no, not really. The truth is, Pender glanced at him, his eyes serious. Go on. Joe took a breath. I came to see you because I wanted to impress you. I wanted to gain your trust, and I was hoping, planning, actually, to persuade you to help me put this deal together, this deal I'm working on, to bring your money and connections, and, you know, Joe's voice dropped to an almost inaudible confession, your clout. There it was. He said it, and now it was out in the open. His reason for coming to see the man in the first place, the BK account, clout and leverage. Joe had never seen Pender angry. He certainly didn't want to see it now. Nevertheless, he took another breath, then forced himself to turn back and look at his mentor in the eye. It was a stupid reason, Joe said. Pender spoke softly. No, not stupid. It's where you were, that's all. Besides, that wasn't the reason you came to see me. You only thought it was the reason you came to see me. Joe stared at him. Then what was the real reason I came? Pender smiled. You were hungry to learn about success. Genuine success. The fourth law. The law of authenticity. The most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. 